Hello. Well, uh, I'm here to talk about a movie that I wanted to get last year, but for reasons I've discussed already, I didn't get before. Uh, now I got it uh, well, earlier this month. Um, ordered it on like the last Sunday of January, and it uh, came three days uh, <laughs> from. Uh, are being told uh, four to seven business days, so very fast shipping, I uh, will say, which is very good. Um, and that movie is, of course, Citizen Kane, the uh, 4K Blu ray set um, from Criterion. And uh, yes, this is uh, an incredible uh, set with all these special features um, and, uh, and the blu-ray disc the normal blu-ray disc uh, works well so you know I made sure to buy it after uh, the correction with the sound and other things stuff like that you know for a while it was sort of confusing as to specific what the problem was because uh, initially what happened there was a lot of stuff talking and then it was like with the sound from 30 minutes to the end and it's like that really sucks um, but yeah this uh, is really fantastic uh, from the way it, uh, the entire movie just looks and sounds is great um, and all the special features you know 4k digital restoration uncompressed monorail soundtrack a 4k ultra high definition blu-ray disc of the film uh, and presented in the uh, Adobe uh, Vision HD RM3 blu-rays with the film and special features three commentaries with uh, Orson Welles scholars James Nairmore and Jonathan Rosenbaum filmmaker Peter Bogdanovich and uh, film critic Roger Ebert Complete Citizen Kane, a rarely seen feature-length BBC documentary, new interviews with film critics uh, Franz Smith uh, uh, and I'm a uh, film scholar Raquel J. Gates, uh, two video essays from film scholars uh, Robert L. Carringer and filmmakers David Carrens and Randall William Cook. New uh, program by film scholars, um, uh, film scholars and FX experts Craig Barron and Ben Burt. Interviews with collaborators of Wells, as well as film professionals who have been influenced by the film. New documentary featuring archival interviews with Wells, television appearances by actor Joseph Cotton, The Hearts of Age, a silent film made by Wells as a student in 1934. Uh, television programs featuring appearances by Wells and the Mercury Theater uh, producer John Hausman, Hector uh, William uh, Holland on his collaboration with Wells, Mercury Theater radio plays, production stills, newsreel footage, and trailer. English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing, as well as a deluxe packaging including a book with an essay by critic uh, Bill G. Ivory. Um, yeah, this is loaded with a lot of stuff. Um, and of course, um, I talked about this, and I have no real intention of ever getting rid of this myself, um, though if I ever did depart with it, I'll probably give it to a family member, honestly. Um, and also, this has a DVD of the Battle over Citizen Kane, which was not mentioned in there. So, if anything, there is another reason to keep this for me. Um, now there's the Blu-ray and uh, the Battle of, you know, over Citizen Kane. Um, so there is that. Now, I do have another Blu-ray here, but the 
as a reason for that. Um, you know, much has been said about the artwork. <laughs> um, many people love the minimalistic uh, look of just the K. Um, you know, I was not a fan of it when I first saw it. And I thought, you know, once I have it and own it and have it in my hands, my uh, my thoughts could change. Um, however, uh, put that right here. Um, my feelings actually haven't really changed much, and also I think that the way this you get the discs is a bit much. You know, there you go. Hey, here's the 4K. Uh, disc, you know, for K Blu ray disc. And oh, there is like a disc two of the Blu ray. And here is the first Blu ray disc with the film. And, uh, and then with the E, you get the third Blu ray disc. And uh, here is the booklet with the essay. And, um, there you go, yeah, that, there you go. It's like a puzzle, you know, like Rosebud, as they say at the end of the film, like, it's like the, like, you know, it was like part, like a missing puzzle piece. And, of course, we see, uh, Kane's second wife, uh, conducting, you know, uh, or, or, conducting, uh, building uh, jigsaw puzzles because, you know, there's not much to do because he just wants to stay home and in a big home and not do much. And understandably, in a way, you know, I can understand wanting to sort of like a, a bit, a bit be at home, but uh, just to just only be at home and barely socialize with people or go out, that would be annoying. But yeah, um, I am not big of a, a fan of uh, how you get the discs out, and also, you know, with this sort of stuff that people have always had uh, mixed feelings on. This some people like them, some people don't. But you know, it, on one hand, it does help keep the discs, you know, fairly secure. But on the other hand, you know, getting the discs out are a bit difficult sometimes, and it, you kind of what I was going through all the discs and just looking at it, all the features I, I did worry about possibly you know ripping uh, some of this uh, like this just to get the disc out and that's not good um, so there is always that problem um, and uh, yeah cool booklet and of the uh, yeah. I haven't really looked at this too much um, the credits and all that and the essays and yeah it's um, some stills here and there I think this would have been nice for a post uh, for the cover, you know, him like that, just on top of the newspapers. Um, though I guess that would have been a bit too close to this one, so you know, I'm sure they wanted to do something different. Um, but even then, I think, you know, I, I mentioned before the traditional original poster that you can find online of what uh, the poster for Citizen Kane was. It's fine, you know. There's different various uh, posters, of course, but you know there are some that are more frequent than uh, frequently seen than others. Uh, but if that was not the case, I think though this image would have been good because you would have had Orson Welles, and you'd know 
um, what the film would be then, uh, as opposed to just um, spelling the name backwards. E A. Or whoops. Hold on, I did it wrong. E. And A. Okay. That's another thing. It's kind of can kind of be a bit confusing. Um, with that. Oh no, and I forgot to put the booklet thing. Oh, well, well. That was just a, a silly of me to do. Uh, oh, but look, oh, this snow globe. Well, fanta fantastic all the way around. Okay, incredible. There you go. Yeah, rosebud. Or before rosebud, I should say, because it's not broken. Spoiler alert, even though that's like at the v very beginning of the film, you know. There you go, yeah, I just worry about damaging this as I open it and all that stuff. And that's not fun at all, and let me try and get this all in one. To have as little editing to do as possible. Oh, come on now. Though maybe this will be entertaining enough to where people won't mind if it. Oh, there you go. Hey, second try, fantastic. So, yeah. There we go. Citizen Kane on the Criterion, back again. And there's like some stuff from like the 1990s, uh, like Laserdisc stuff. Some of those features, I special features I talked about at the beginning, which I don't normally do, but because this is. You know, the 80th anniversary edition, basically, of Citizen Kane and the first time on 4K, really, in terms of physical media. And back in the Criterion Collection, you know, kind of a big deal. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of cool to see some of the... Because the, this was the very first uh, Criterion movie, or the, or the film that Criterion Collection ever released back uh, in the days of Laserdisc. Um, I don't have any laser discs, but I know uh, a decent amount about them. At least as much as the average person who knows about laser disc knows. You know, I'm no expert, but you know, I have the basic knowledge that I'm sure you do of what laser disc uh, was. Um, and so, you know, it's cool for the second uh, sort of reprinting of Citizen Kane on laser disc that they put out. You know, that uh, there's like some like a uh, special features, because the first one had nothing. The second uh, Criterion film that was released, which was King Kong, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, had like commentary and stuff, which was completely brand new, really, you know, commentary over a film, you know, that's just, it was uh, like unheard of back then, you know, people talking over a movie, you know, even going to the, as far as, describing certain aspects of the making of it, which is pretty much what commentary is. Um, especially for if it's a, like the director or an actor or actress who's a part of it. Um, I mean, I guess you could also have like, you know, film critics and other people who are fans of the film talk about it who had really nothing to do with it. You might throw in some interesting stuff about, uh, you know, the making of the film, but they also might talk about like the, you know, the impact of the film, like for Citizen Kane, what that has on movies. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool to see all this new stuff and old stuff back for this set. Uh, again, I'm not going to get rid of this because it's a nice little uh, 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 addition as well. You know, this might be might have better quality of sorts, but you know, this is still worth. Uh, I think owning but i have this film uh it's a mad 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 world and the reason i have this is because similar to citizen kane with the packaging of the sort of like housing of the discs this also has that um and i know i believe i've seen new versions of this but with the traditional uh uh packaging so not so much this anymore but i got it when this was like new but I want to show you all this. So 
So here we go. One, two, three, four, five discs. Um, two Blu-ray discs and uh, three DVDs. Yeah. Um, you see, this is a very good uh, housing of the... Uh, even though it's the same sort of style as to how they house the uh, discs. Um, you know, which I think it, even this actually slides out better. And I don't feel the risk of possibly ripping or damaging the package. And it's nice to come a bit. Like, see, this is that done right. You know, people do complain about these. But, you know, with this, at least from just how I just did that, I felt no real risk of potentially damaging the uh, the housing and the uh, sort of like uh, box art essentially as well as the uh, like ripping that nor feel like I was going to rip or break the DVD because that was the DVD and it was not a Blu-ray um, but also you get this contents and uh, this All this cool stuff here. See, it's a mad, 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 mad world. Everyone's chasing the money. And, uh, yeah. I think that, uh, was very good uh, for it. And then, of course, you know, have the booklets and stuff. And here's a cool map of It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World. I'll probably talk about this film at some point, but, you know, here's the map of this. And, but, you know, I wanted to just sort of compare a, 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 a Blu-ray edition, uh, or in this case, well, to this 4K Blu-ray version of the film, because, you know, just compare the packaging of how, you know, uh, that Criterion did, which, again, I'm pretty sure it was because of the whole aspect of the missing piece of the puzzle of, rosebud and such that is why uh, they did it in the way they did it but it's just kind of awkward I think um, it's just to get the discs out and you know and then if you forget the uh, you know, little book with the essays and stuff in there you didn't have to undo it all and then put that make sure that's back in there and it's just it's a bit of a bit of a pain in a way um films look the film looks great uh though um, the special features and stuff are excellent so you know no real complaints there complaints there glad i waited to get the corrected uh um Blu-ray disc for the first uh, normal Blu-ray disc. Um, there was never any complaints of the 4K, so you know, no real having to worry about that. But you know, a lot's been said about the problems that uh, Citizen Kane on, from Criterion had of its release, and there were even some people say that really sucks because you know, uh, uh, home video like Blu-rays and such, and DVDs, uh, are very niche these days. You know, so many things are streaming, and so when you have problems that we saw with this, that could possibly uh, uh, get people not as interested in uh, physical home video releases. You know, buying things like from iTunes or you know Amazon or whatever just to get buy and like own the films that way or just stream you know on Amazon Hulu uh, Apple TV Netflix you know the Criterion Channel which I have and there's also something from the Criterion Channel with uh, Citizen Kane because I yeah I believe they did have that through uh, their streaming service um, at some point, so it's kind of cool that something from the Criterion channel is on here that was made specifically for that. Um, so that's really cool to have. 
Um, but yeah, this is, uh, you know, that's unfortunate, but, you know, for those of us who like uh, physical media, I do too, and I'm sure you do also, at least those who are watching this, um, you know, we will support and get, uh, uh, physical media stuff of various films when they come out. Um, I uh, wish that, uh, you know, Netflix and Amazon would, like, you know, release more of their stuff through home video. You know, if not through, like, Criterion or uh, Shout Factory, Scream Factory, or Arrow, or whatever home video uh, company that exists, just find some distributor to have a uh, have a good distribution deal where everybody involved wins financially and then the people who enjoyed the film who would want to own it like on Blu-ray will win also because they'd be able to get it on uh, physical media because sometimes you know when it comes to streaming um, you know I have nothing against streaming at all I have subscriptions to various uh, streaming services, but, you know, when it comes to streaming, you know, sometimes, you know, if I want to watch a movie, but maybe there's, like, some problems with my internet or something, you know, um, you know, it, you know, even if, you know, like, bills been paid and all that good stuff, but for some, sometimes th things like that happen, sometimes something go on paywire with the internet and get disconnected and reconnect and all that and maybe that there's just going to be problems and you might have to call to see what's going on and if you want to watch something like a movie if it's only on a streaming service then you kind of you have to wait for a while uh, whereas if you own the movie such as you know the Irishman a Criterion released this Netflix film so you know I don't have to just rely on Netflix um, to watch this film I mean I can always watch it on Netflix anytime I want but I can also watch it on Blu-ray anytime I want plus also the high definition is truly high definition here same with like the 4k and the 1080p high definition of the Blu-ray um, that's true high definition with streaming a lot of factors uh, uh, you know, come to play where, like, because of like bandwidth and uh, internet uh, strength and all these things, to where you're not even getting the complete full clarity of you know, what you're uh, essentially is being advertised if you subscribe to like a uh, a uh, streaming uh, service, and that's not completely to the fault of the streaming services it's just that's just how it is they can't always be able to provide you with the complete uh, 4k experience that you might be paying for or the complete uh, 1080p high definition that you'd expect you know because a lot of things uh, factor in and they get, get very technical and I don't want to get completely technical with all that but you know you know, I just, for things like that, and, you know, have compression and stuff to where you're not seeing the complete clarity that, you know, you're being promised, and, you know, and no doubt, you know, Amazon Prime, uh, Netflix, Hulu, and all these ser services do their best to make sure you have the best uh, looking and sounding movie show watching experience as you possibly can through those services. They aren't always able to. Uh, that's just the truth of the matter. Um, you know, we're getting to a point where as time goes on and technology always improves, that is always more and more uh, achievable. But even then, there will be always be something more with like movies and TV show where it will be you know sort of a, a new step forward, which will then just as like some like streaming services just got like here all the 4k into where now everybody can have great 4k looking stuff 
an 8K will might come along within 10 years from now or so, and then uh, people will be starting to slowly adjust to that, and stuff like that will constantly happen. Um, uh, that's just how things are. Um, but physical media, if you can get it, it's great. Um, and while I can understand problems like what the Citizen came. Disc one of the Blu-ray with the feature film, or those three discs from the Friday the Thirteenth set, when those had some problems, uh, I can definitely see people saying, "Why, you know, that's not that isn't going to help physical media in the future." And to an extent, I do agree. But thanks to the response to like Shout Factory or Criterion and how they were going about to fix that problem, you know, I think that's great thing. Of course, there were some people who were uh, upset about Criterion and having to send the discs to them so you can then get your disc as opposed to like how Shout Factory did it where you can throw the discs away that were defective on your own or just keep them or whatever you wanted to do with them. Um, and if, as long as you show like proof of purchase and then say what discs had a pro had problems on them. Um, you can then and ask for a replacement. They would then send you replacement discs free of charge. Um, you know that, of course, that's Shout Factory's Screen Factory. Not the, you know, similar in the sense of what they do, like with Criterion, make the uh, make sure their films and stuff and shows are presented the best way possible. But you know, Criterion is run by different people. And so they make different decisions. And so having to pay for shipping with your disc to send back, you know, I can understand um, uh, people's disappointment with that. Um, but at least they were on top of it, and they were making sure to fix the issue. You know, people were upset. Uh, and so I think that's a great thing. Apologies for all this stuff with the whole physical media stuff, but I did hear about that a lot, uh, quite a bit prior to getting this from the months of when it was first released and then, you know, pulled uh, from being ordered from Barnes & Noble not even going to be able to go to the store to get it and all that stuff um, from that point, which was like October or November, actually November, to, <clears throat> and late January, early February when I got it, you know, there is, there was a lot of talk about that, so I just thought it was all good, that something to just put at the end here. Um, I like physical media, I always will, nothing against streaming, but, you know, there are positives for, you know, Uh, for physical media that streaming isn't always able to provide you you know for whatever reason um, so even when you do have no problems or when you have no problems with the connection with your internet internet you're not always getting the complete clear clarity of like 4k or 1080p that you're promised and, um, and again that's not really the fault of like, like these uh, uh, you know, uh, streaming services, you know, there's a lot of, like, you know, compression and bandwidth and and the connection of one's internet, all these things, you know, uh, affect it and you know, the, all that. That's just how it is. You know, we can dislike that, but that's just a reality. And um, it's something that people don't always talk about. Um, and again, I have nothing against streaming. You know, I have watched stuff streaming here and there. I don't always watch, like, I don't really watch a whole lot of shows on, like, Netflix and stuff, but that's because, you know, many of the things that are on there I either already own or will probably own some point in the future. And some of their original stuff just doesn't really interest me. Um, so there's also that. Um, but if there's something good streaming, and that's the only way I could ever watch it, I'll, I'll check it out and see if it's good. And if I like it, fantastic. If I think it's not that great or 
a little overrated, then all right, so be it. But I saw it. Um, but yeah, um, that is my thoughts on the Citizen Kane 4K Blu-ray release, as well as just you know the response of Criterion, which I think was good. But you know, I know I understand the problems people had with it, so you know I can see some disappointment with the charging of shipping, especially during a time where not everybody was able to, you know, financially set as they would like to be, but, you know, happens, unfortunately. Um, but, yeah. Hope all of you will have a great day and a, a great weekend and a great week. Um, coming up, you know, it'll be March soon, so hope uh, this month has been great, and I hope, you know, you have a great uh, next month. See you all next time. Bye.